Welcome to Wired AF. You're listening to your hosts, Steph and Brandon. Today, we're going to be talking about counting macros and why it's so popular and why you should start with protein first to make it so much easier for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is a great little topic of conversation. Obviously, everyone kind of talks about macros these days and how counting macros is really great for aiding weight loss or improving performance or even, you know, putting on like muscle. Um, but we want to take a bit of a different perspective and talk about the importance of protein especially. So stay tuned and uh, you're going to find out some really cool stuff. So if you haven't already seen our podcast with Dr. David where we talk about the book Eat Like the Animals and because, well, Steph and I couldn't both be there on the same day and coordinate that because we're just quite busy with our other schedules. <laughs> it is a really good podcast to check out. And it's something in there we, we spoke about was the importance of protein and how people have been, you know, they obsess over counting calories, but often your body, well, not often, your body does count calories for you. And you have the five main appetites, protein, um, fats, carbohydrates, sodium, and calcium. And they're going to be the ones that your body's going to be regulating those all the time. So for people who don't know, what are macronutrients? So you've got, oh, do you want to answer yeah, that? I think you should answer it because you're the nutritionist <laughs> yeah, in the exactly. house. <laughs> uh, so you've got protein, fat, and carbohydrates. They're your macronutrients. They're your ones that give you energy. And then you have your micronutrients, which are your vitamins and minerals, which don't give you any energy. So they're the two main differences. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Exactly. Yeah. So which one is the most calorie dense when we're comparing the macronutrients? Yeah, so that's something that's really important. So protein is going to be your lowest or protein and protein and carbohydrates both equate to four calories per gram mm -hmm. and fat, which was your question. <laughs> fat, <laughs> fat is the most energy dense. That is okay. nine calories per gram. So almost double. Yeah. Yeah, more, right. More than so double. if we put this in perspective, so I guess like for people who just ate fat only, and we're trying to get their daily calories with just fat, they would be eating significantly less volume of food to get the same amount of calories in their day. Whereas if, you, if they were to eat, say, carbs and protein, only carbs and protein, they'd be eating more volume of food to be able to get those calories in the day. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. When you look at it like that, the science of it, uh, you would need to eat double the amount of food as such if it was protein and carbohydrate to hit the same amount of calories per day whereas you would need to hit you would need to eat half the amount of food if you're eating fat only so you can see how if you have a high fat diet it's really easy to eat lots of calories and it's obviously people who eat foods that are high in fat really easy to gain weight yeah i wonder then why the ketogenic diet has gained so much popularity when like it doesn't really make sense in terms of the volume of food you get to eat. Um, I don't know about like everybody listening or watching, but I love eating food. And so being able to eat I think as everybody much, likes eating food, yeah. <laughs> but being able to eat as much as I can is like, I think that's a really great like goal, isn't it? Like within obviously reason, but eat, being able to eat as much as you can, especially with those healthy foods, um, I think that's like more appealing than restricting completely and not being able to eat as that amount yeah i think with the ketogenic diet now that we're going off on a tangent Sorry. <laughs> no i think the whole thing is that there there's the foods in that group that they want to eat a lot of that they're suddenly allowed to eat because they're following mm. this kind of plan so okay. yeah that would probably be the another day <laughs> yeah, that's something for another day so should you count your calories and and if you if you should why should you do that so often we see people who want to make a change to their diet they want to start or you know sometimes i recommend by counting calories often i'll prioritize you can say what you think about this but yeah. i prefer doing a food diary initially to give me an idea of where they're at and what they're eating because we'll be able to estimate the amount of calories from that and go from there and often i find people just writing down will make it less obsessive and maybe less daunting if i say i'll oh, count your calories and they start counting they're like oh my god i'm already at 2000 uh, and they only had half the day or, or whatever people who will just write their stuff down might give me a more true indication of where they're at because they're not worried there's no number associated to that so that's why i'll often get people to do a food diary first but counting calories can be a really good way to see obviously how many calories you're having and get an idea of it i don't think you need to if you eat the same foods all the time you don't need to count your calories every day that's just unnecessary because like we spoke about with the Eat Like the Animals podcast and when we spoke with Dr. David, your body is going to be doing all these micro calculations on how much food you need to have and that's going to go into how hungry you are and it's going to create lots of different things. But your body's already calculating all this. So you sitting down and writing it down, it's like wasting energy. It's wasting time for no reason. It's inefficient. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the counting calories thing, it's, it's such a tricky kind of thing because, you know, counting calories, we, we need to know if, if anyone's coming to us with nutrition goals, we need to know how much they are consuming to know, you know, okay, if you want to change your body composition, do we need to reduce the calories you're eating or do we need to increase the calories you're eating? So it's a really good guide because basically your body composition is going to change depending on how much food you eat. Um, so we need to know that information. But like you said, sometimes just seeing a number can be really daunting for people. So writing down the actual food, I think is a really great way to approach it. And like as a nutritionist, you can calculate the, the calories from that anyway. And you sort of can calculate the macronutrients in that as it is. So I guess from the, the pa- patient, from the client's perspective. Or patient um, or client, yeah. <laughs> um, that's me going into osteo mood. From the client's perspective, it's a little bit easier, a little bit nicer just to see the actual food and not see the numbers associated with that. And also I think as a female as well, I don't know if any other females watching or listening can relate, but it's sort of been like shoved down our throats a bit with um, advertising or social media or just like magazines or pretty much anywhere. It's like, oh, you have to eat 1,200 calories a day or this is the diet, it's 1,500 calories a day. And they're like the numbers that are always kind of forced down our throats is you have to have between 1,200 and 1,500 calories a day. And it's just kind of like it's not actually particularly accurate. Um, and that's I, I think then if you see a number that's more than that or around that, it's very easy to like freak out and be like, oh, I'm eating too much food. So not seeing the numbers can be more beneficial. Yeah, exactly. So how many calories should you be having, which is something that people ask us all the time. So mm. really simple to work this out. It's going to work for about 90% of the whole population. So if you just go into any BMR calculator, which is your basal metabolic rate, which we've spoken about in the early, way back last <laughs> year in the earlier episodes, but you're just going to be able to calculate that. You can go onto the internet, put your age, height and weight in, and then you'll be able to get a BMR, which is just a, a nice estimate of the amount of calories you burn for 24 hours with doing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have some activity kind of coefficients that go next to it. So depending on how active you are, it'll multiply that and then it'll be higher if you're more active, be lower if you're less active. And that's pretty much the easiest way to start with that kind of stuff. That'll give you an estimate of the amount of calories you need to eat to stay at the same weight that you are now. Mm-hmm. So that's just your maintenance. Yeah. So then in order to lose weight, depending on how aggressive you would want to do that, anywhere between a 10 to 40% decrease would be a nice steady weight loss. And same goes for um, the 10 to 40% would be, so 10% would be a steady steady weight loss. And then 40% of that would, 40% decrease would be a very aggressive weight loss. Mm. And often we see people go straight to the 40%. They're like, oh, Mm. my BMI and all that works out to about 2,000. I'm going to eat 1,000 or 1,200 which is a big drop, 40% drop. And then after after a week, they're starving again and they're really, really hungry and it's not sustainable. So then they go back to eating 2,500 uh, and then they you can mm. kind of see what happens mm. there. Yeah. So then I guess where does the macronutrients fall into this whole idea of calories and all of that? Because that's, I guess, the topic we wanted to focus on. And now you guys have an intro of the calories, but Where does the macros play a role in all this? Exactly. So what we're finding is a lot of people's diets are really diluted in protein. So not many people's diets actually have a lot of protein in them. Most people have around 15 to, you know, lucky if they hit 15% for their entire daily intake. And majority of their calories coming from fats and, and carbohydrates. Not a lot is coming from protein. So our goal and what I do as a nutritionist is get people to prioritize their protein intake. So I get them to start with that. So they're going to be focusing on just not worrying about carbohydrates and protein because your body will take care of that for you. you. Carbohydrates and fat. Sorry. Yes. Yep, yep. Carbohydrates and fat. Yep. Yeah. Carbs and fat is will be taken care of by your body and you're focusing on hitting your protein intake. So the way we work that out is I want you to hit around 20% and we'll start with that. So 20% of your daily intake must come, 20% of your macros must come from protein and your goal is to find foods yeah. that are going to hit that. So for example, if you have, um, you know, a thousand calories and 2000 calories in a day, for example, we just want 20% of that to come from protein. Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward. So we just want to make it clear as well, we're not demonizing carbs and fat. We're simply saying to prioritize protein and hit that as your main goal 
and the rest will like you can still have carbs and fats in your meals but you just have yeah, to of make, sure, make sure throughout the day that you're getting enough protein essentially so then when you figured out that protein percentage you've just said 20 percent of the calories yes so then if you're to relate that to grams because then you give people a grams goal don't you yeah yeah, yeah. so say for someone like yourself what mm. we've been working on if you have 1600 calories per day around that 20 percent mark was working out to be between 90 and 100 grams of protein per day mm. So 90 and 100 grams might seem like a lot for someone. That's probably because you're only eating mm -hmm. 60 or 50 a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have, if you have cereal for breakfast, mm -hmm. probably going to still be at zero or three grams. Yeah. If you have, if you just have a salad for lunch, probably going to be at around, you know, zero still. And then if yeah. you have a small piece of meat or a small serve of tofu for dinner, you're probably going to be at 20 grams for the day. And then only 5% of your entire daily intake came from protein. Of course, other foods like rice and that have minute am amounts of protein mm, and, yeah. you know, pasta has, you know, some sort of protein and, and all, all, all foods have, you know, some proportion, but very low. So, of course, we're not demonizing carbohydrates and fats. We're trying to teach you that this is the protein leverage hypothesis, which pretty much means that the amount of food that you eat, so if you focus on protein, your body will automatically calculate the amount of carbohydrates and fats that's needed to be satiated mm. we've kind of been running an experiment i guess with, well not an experiment but with me because yeah. you've been doing this with me lately. yes well with a lot of people yeah. as well yeah because i sort of came to you like a month ago and i was like i want to change my body composition i'd like to lean up a little bit um you know i'm doing some weight training and i just want to see a little bit more results and i want to feel a little bit leaner and you know, I don't want to rush it. I want it to be sustainable and I don't want to feel like I'm restricting myself. And I was really clear that I didn't want to count calories as well. And that's something we decided that was just not going to be best. So you were like, okay, we're going to prioritize protein. And I'll, initially you gave me my protein goals and we did my maintenance protein, remember? Yes, yes, and 100 you, grams. Yeah. It was between 100 and 110. And yep. you're like, you have to fit between 100 and 110 each day. And the first week I was like, oh my God, I'm eating so much food. I was like in shock, but, and then we like reduced after two weeks, we sort of went down to like the weight loss, like the steady weight loss yeah. number of protein. Only only a 10% drop. Yeah. So then now I'm trying to hit between 90 and hundred grams per day. And when I hit it every single day consistently, it's amazing how satiated I am and how full I am. And I don't want to like snack or binge on anything. Like I literally just go about my normal day and it's just really satisfying I think and then I know the last few days I haven't been hitting my protein goals I was telling you about this and I was like and then I, I don't know I've just been wanting to eat ice cream and chocolate and like I haven't really had the same satiated feeling because I think I haven't been hitting my protein goals so it's been really interesting for us to experiment yeah, with me. Yeah, <laughs> it, has, it has. So if we look at the reverse, so if we say you've had a diet that's diluted in protein, mm. which is like a lot of people, then you'll want to overeat fats and carbohydrates. Mm. And the reason for that is you're trying to eat that so that you can increase your protein intake. Mm. So everything's trying to center around that. So you're going to eat as much chocolate, as much bread, as much all those things as you can because they contain small amount, trace amounts for some things of protein. And once you've yeah. eaten a lot of those things, your body will say, okay, we finally hit, you know, 30 grams for the day or a small amount. So imagine trying to hit 50 grams of, or 60 grams of protein for the day by just eating chocolate. Yeah. You would have to eat yeah. a lot of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you were to do that with chicken uh, and tofu and eggs throughout the day mm. and beans and, and whatnot, that would be significantly easier. Mm. And you probably find if we can just use common sense through that, which one would probably have the lower amount of calories per day? Yeah, well, it'd be the protein. Because <laughs> like we spoke about at the start, you know, the protein per the, the calories per grams, it's four. four right? Yeah, four yeah. calories per gram. Yeah. So protein has a lower amount of calories compared to fat. So if you're naturally eating more protein than fat, like we said, you, it's going to be, you're going to be more satiated and you're going to be more likely to hit those composition goals that you want to hit. And a lot of research shows that there's no extreme you know kind of upper limit of what you can intake as well so with protein yeah so yeah. so it's it's great to know that you know even if you are say hitting 100 grams it might seem like so much of protein per day and you're a small person um <laughs> like yourself you're it's good to know that your body is going to use that but it's also good to know that it's safe as well mm, so it's not definitely it's because only it's only going to feel extreme because your the current diet and the Western diet that we're seeing with a lot of processed foods is so diluted in it. Yeah. Okay.
Interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. It is interesting. So often we see people go wrong with, with counting calories and the things that they go wrong is they focus and they um, they analyze. Counting the, calories or yeah, counting macros? Sorry, counting calories or macros, all the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all the same to me. Yeah. But people will focus so much on just that specific thing like, oh, this food had this much and this food had this much. And and it's just, they, they overanalyze it so much. Mm. So we just want to focus on, let's, let's slow down. Let's take a step back, focus on one mo- macronutrient protein, and then the rest will take care of itself. We're also like want people to understand too, I guess this is my thought is that we're talking about normal everyday people here. We're not talking about like athletes or people who are like training Correct. for a specific competition. We're just talking about normal people. So, which is probably like 99% of the population. Um, you know, if you're thinking about like an athlete who's preparing for a competition or someone who is like, you know, for some reason doing a bodybuilding competition and has to have certain aesthetic goals, then like, I mean, they're still going to follow the same principles, but they're obviously going to be more dialed into their calories and macronutrients than the normal person needs to be. So like normal people don't really need to count their calories as like closely as someone like that who's competing. So that's, I guess, another thing to take away is like, you're probably a normal person. <laughs> so normal people can do this. They can count their protein. They can focus on their protein. You don't have to overanalyze. Oh, I had an extra 15 calories today from the oil that I put in my fry pan when I was cooking my eggs. Like it, that doesn't oh, kind of please. matter if you no. really look at the grand scheme of things for normal people. It really doesn't matter that much. But even an athlete, as you just said, and a normal and an average person, mm-hmm. anyone, we all have the same basic biology and the basic physiology. Unless you have a special condition, like you have diabetes, or you have a you know Crohn's disease, or you have something specific that's going to impede you, like that's going to affect your dietary intake. Everything else, the basic physiology is going to be very similar. So what works for me is probably going to work for Steph in a way that we know what doesn't work. So mm. if I was to eat all my calories from chocolate, well, that probably that probably isn't going to work. But mm. we know what does work, having, prioritizing your protein intake. So often I'm not sure how deep people are going to go as a nutritionist. I don't know what these special secrets are that these other nutritionists are doing with these special athletes because there's only so much depth to this. So there's only so much you can analyze someone's diet without them becoming extremely obsessive because there's no amount of calculating it and there's no amount of you micro analyzing your entire food intake that's going to actually change the way your body absorbs it meal timing and things like that are obviously going to be important after training and those kind of things are going to be important supplements it might make a small role but at the end of the day your body's going to take care of so much guesswork so that's going to be a really good thing Yeah, it's actually very simple. Nutrition is very simple if you break it down like how we're trying to break it down, I guess, because there's a lot of people that are going to complicate it or overcomplicate it. And it's like, okay, you got your macronutrients, you got your calories. All we're saying is prioritize protein and then the rest of the calories for your daily intake will take care of itself. Um, Obviously, fruits and vegetables are healthy. We all know that. Drinking water is healthy. Like, Guys, you know what to eat. If it comes in a box and it's got sugar and lots of like ingredients on it, like you know that that's not good for you. People know this. Like it's not it's not hard, um, but it's easy to overcomplicate it. So if you can focus on your protein especially and then the rest of the calories will take care of itself and you should be fine. Awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, this is talking about the protein intake. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions for Steph or I, please let us know and we'd be happy to answer them in the next episode. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already checked out the Eat Like the Animals episode where we talk about the book, Eat Like the Animals with Dr. David, which was is being a really big success on YouTube, which is awesome. We had so much, I think it's about 400 or nearly 500 views. So really, really happy with that. It's our most successful episode (laughs) yet. So that's awesome. And it's great to see you guys enjoying that. If you have any questions for us, like I said, please let us know. And if you aren't following us on Instagram at Wired AF Podcast, please do. And uh, that's all we have. See you guys soon. Bye.